Hey, y'all, can y'all hear me? I'm not going to use a mic, all right? Hey, raise your hand if you've ever gotten stitches before. Huh? All right. Raise your hand if you've ever gotten stitches in your mouth before. Oh, wow. All right, I didn't expect that many hands. All right, I've also gotten stitches on my mouth before, and I'm going to tell y'all a story about it. All right, so when I was growing up, baseball was my thing. I played um, from the age of five when I played t-ball all the way up until I went to college. Um, and when I was 10, I was placed on a travel team. It was the first time I've been on a travel team, and we were actually pretty good. We traveled all around the southeast to different um, states playing in all kinds of tournaments. Um, we won a few of those tournaments, and so we got invited to the World Series um, in Panama City. And so it was towards the end of the summer when this tournament was about to happen. And so for the whole time near the summer, we practiced for this tournament. And so about three weeks before the tournament was happening, we were in our team scrimmaging. So we were scrimmaging against each other. Um, I played the outfield at this time. And so I was playing defense. And one of my best friends was up the bat. And he hit a fly ball towards me. And so I'm, it's right, it's coming at me but it's a little bit short, so I'm going to have to dive for it. Instead of diving, I like slide on my knees, and by the time I put my glove up, the ball instead hits me in my mouth. And didn't think anything of it at the time. I couldn't really feel it. Um, but I looked up and saw another one of my friends who was play, playing second base. He was running out to also try and catch the ball, but his face was just in shock, and it looked scared. And I looked down, on my glove, there was blood like running down my glove. And I was like, what's that from? So I put my hand up to my mouth and then pulled it down. And it was just like this pool of blood in my hand. Um, and so I started screaming. I started crying. I laid on the ground, um, didn't get up. Luckily, my dad was at the practice. And uh, one of my coaches came running out on the field. And they picked me up and carried me to the car. And my dad drove me to the emergency room where we waited for three hours um, for the doctor because it was so crowded I had my like I looked in the mirror while I was in the emergency room and like half my lip was split in half on the top and then like part of my bottom lip was hanging down um, I ended up getting 20 stitches um, this school for a week because my face was so swollen um, that's a good part of that story but so this time where I was carried off the field and uh, helped off the field by my parents reminds me of a story um, in the Bible. So some context to the story, Jesus is performing <coughs> miracles. Um, he's already performed a few, and these cr this crowd of people are starting to follow him, wanting to see more of what Jesus has to offer and see these things that he's doing for himself. Um, and that's where the story picks up in Mark chapter 2. Let's see if I can get some light. Um, it says, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. So during this time of Jesus, houses were only functional for bedrooms. All the work, all the cleaning, all the cooking, everything that you think a house is needed for was done outside of the house. And then when it was time <coughs> to sleep, they would go into this house where maybe a mat was on the floor and some pillows and a blanket or maybe like a twin size mattress. So picture this. Oops. <laughs> Four, four of your friends are outside of the circle and your best friend is laying on a mat and they're carrying that mat, trying to get to me on the inside of the circle. But picture all of y'all are standing up shoulder to shoulder and picture them trying to get through each one of y'all to get to me. You can't. Now picture that you're inside a one bedroom apartment that is probably smaller than rooms that most of y'all have. That's what this was like. 
But back to the story, these four men that were carrying this one guy go up this ladder and climb on top of the roof and start digging in this clay and mud house so that maybe they could get their friend to the foot of Jesus because they had also heard about these miracles. And maybe Jesus would heal this man. And that's where the story picks up some more. It says, when Jesus saw his faith, he said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now the crowd started to murmur and started an uproar of, what is this guy saying? He's healed all these people, but yet he chooses not to heal this guy. He's supposed to say, hey, get up and walk and take your mat. He's supposed to make this man walk again because that's his biggest problem, right? He's paralyzed. That's what is holding him back from this full life. Um, but really, Jesus knew what his biggest problem was. And it's something that you and I and everyone here have something in common with this paralyzed man. And it's sin. Um, and Jesus knew that was his biggest problem. Sin is all this brokenness and hurt. All these things we see in the world that aren't right. Um, sin is the loneliness and the brokenness that we see inside ourselves that we won't, don't want to talk about. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, and then Jesus says to him, son, your sins are forgiven. Guys, we, um, these disabilities inside of ourselves hurt a relationship with Jesus. Um, they, there's brokenness in ourselves that keeps us away from having this relationship with Jesus and he saw this in this paralyzed man um, and that's what he wanted to offer him but later in the story it says that he heals him and that the guy walks off. He shows his power and authority that he is God with skin on on this earth by not only forgiving him of his sins but also healing this man and letting him get up and walk. So I don't know who you are in the story maybe you're on the crowd on the outside um, and know that Jesus is on the inside but you can't see him you don't feel like he's there for you maybe you're one of the four that carried this man to Jesus and see what he does for um, the paralyzed man but you think Jesus is for someone else or maybe you're the paralyzed man and you're at the foot of Jesus and you see him and want this life that he has to offer them, this full life that he is offering you. Um, maybe you just need to hear that, that you are forgiven for all the things that you think you've done wrong. And that's what I want you to hear tonight. If you take one thing home with you, it's that Jesus cares so much, so much for each and every one of you that he looks past all these things that we think we've done, all these things that we think we've done wrong to, um, offer us this life, this whole life, um, and forgive us of our sins. Um, I'm going to pray for us. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Hey God, uh, thank you for this day <coughs> that we get to learn uh, more about you. Um, thank you for letting us have fun. Uh, and thank you for letting us have um, full life through your son, Jesus. Um, it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Do you want to go check a